Okay, uh, what would make the classroom a more equity-minded and just space would be a bigger allowment for student involvement. When we feel like we're not just being lectured to, but allowed to participate in what's happening, we feel that we can be on par with the teachers, I guess you would say, because uh, we can tell them, hey, this actually is wrong, and then you can fix it, and then you can garner, uh, garner further understanding, because then you feel like you're participating in the class, and they're not just lecturing down to you. Not to say that we don't respect our professors, we do, and they definitely know what they're doing, but we're able to learn as well. Um, the one thing that would make me feel more engaged in a classroom would be to have the first 15 or 20 minutes of the class uh, where the students can ask any doubts to the professors regarding the topics that were covered before, the topics that would be covered later, anything regarding the class schedule, the exams, the office hours, anything. Now this idea came through because one of my professor does this and this is really helpful because there are some students who are really very proactive in asking these questions and getting their doubts resolved while there are some others who hesitate to do so. So this exercise really does help those students in solving their doubts too. This is when I did speak up to a professor like after class was uh, we had a guest speaker and he was actually it was for my Israel class for my Jewish studies and he was the actual like Israeli ambassador like like yeah like like I mean legit like government official right so he took the time to talk to our class and talk about like what does it mean like you know what is the what is the U.S. and Israel's like relationship and he was very kind and he was really great and so one of my classmates came in late and she's one of the people I said that kind of asked offensive questions and so when she walked in I, uh, I instantly got like a sinking feeling I was like oh you know hopefully she won't say anything wrong and what ended up happening was we're listening to him talk. All of a sudden, he looks over at her and goes, are you filming me? And she's holding her phone up like this. And we all look, and it looks like she is filming him. And she goes, oh, no, the Obi-Wan Kenobi trailer just dropped, and I'm uh, watching that. I'm, like, super excited. How do you say that? Like, how do you have the confidence to say that? And, like, my professor was like, please put your phone away. And she also wasn't wearing a mask. So then she's like, oh, you need to put on your mask. She had to ask her three times to put on her mask because she was like, oh, okay. And then she like put her phone away and she goes, no, 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 you have to put on a mask. She's like, okay, if you don't put on that, you have to leave. And then she finally dug out her mask and put it on. But it was like, in that moment, I felt so embarrassed. And then I found out that later, the ambassador also said that he was very offended by that, that that wasn't okay. But it was like this thing that, again, I felt like, she just was kind of like, okay, just put your mask on and, you know, that's it. But I was kind of like, I wish she would have told her, you know what, that was inappropriate, please leave. Or like, why don't you, again, take the day off and we'll talk about it. Or let's have a conversation before you return to class. But it was just this thing that she just told her, hey, you know what, put your phone away, put your mask on and just be there. You know, it just felt so, I felt very embarrassed. And I felt like every time this woman kind of raised her hand, it was like, okay, what's going to come out? Like, what's, what's next, you know? It will make the classroom a just space if we are able to engage um, in conversations among all of us. Um, a lot of times that, a lot of times we can learn from each other. Uh, for example, me going in a classroom and not knowing someone, I wouldn't know what they're going through in a daily basis. But if I only heard what they're going through and what they come from, maybe that will help me um, be considerate more of them. Um, so many, our professors can maybe learn from us as well, and we can learn from our professors. So something that'll make the classroom more equitably in minded would be that professors should be more caring. Um, they can mention like, oh, if students ever um, need to ha talk to anybody for like personal reasons, they can, they're more than welcome to go to the office hours or schedule one with them. They can talk about like their feelings about some issue that they're going through or if they, maybe they're going through something hard. So I think just talking with them and letting them know they'll have a, is a good resource. What would help make the classroom a more equi equity-minded space is, um, is with homework is to, if you're grading based on correctness, to be very careful in how you select your questions because you could select questions that are available to, or the, which solutions are only available to specific students. The specific students being people that could afford um, resources like Chegg or other homework solution um, sites, uh, or people that might have access to solutions from books um, because either they bothered spending the time looking for it rather than answering the, you know, thinking about the questions 
or because they have some insight from other students um, or because they have solutions from previous courses because they know people from other, you know, other courses that not everyone has access to that information. So what ends up happening is the students that really, really care and that are really trying and putting effort to solve those solutions get graded a certain way. Might not be an A, might be a B because they made a couple mistakes. But the students that are not putting in the effort, that have solutions, that are just maybe using those solutions to answer the questions, or using the solutions even as a guide to, even if they do care, using solutions as a guide to answer solution, uh, questions. But they have an unfair advantage because they could get 100% because they have solutions, whether, whether or not they care or not. So by that, by doing that, you're damaging your you're, you're hurting the students that are trying to put in an effort and don't have the solutions and you're giving an unfair advantage to very specific students. So I think a method of solving that is either being careful with how you select the questions to avoid that, or if you can't do that and that's impossible. I mean, I think sometimes, for example, in electrical engineering, it's sometimes very difficult to write up your own question. It takes a lot of time, time that professors are already busy with so many other things to be effective professors. Um, so taking the time to answer those questions or create those questions is difficult. So another thing is, is make homework be graded on completeness or effort and then either before or after provide the solutions to every single student. That way every single student has an opportunity to see that you don't have to just be, you know, the student that affords CHEG or the student that happens to have the solution because they knew someone else. Uh, I believe the classroom would be a more equitable space if homework was graded based on completeness and effort rather than just com uh, correctness, especially since it's practice.